What's up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you have a fantastic Monday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing I want to talk about today is the story coming out of Richmond, B.C. And you may have already seen the video, but for those who have not, here's what happened. You got a cute little sea wine in the water. This young girl seems to want a picture with it, and then... Oh my God! I have so many feelings about this. I'm surprised, I'm angry, I'm impressed, I'm thankful. So let's talk about those emotions. So the first thing is the anger. Why did that family allow that little girl to get so close to the sea line? I didn't show this in the clip just before. Before the girl got pulled, this happened. The sea lion already seemed aggressive, or at the very least, interested in a less than ideal way towards the little girl. And so the obvious move would have been to get the hell away from that sea lion, but first, let me take a selfie. Bad move. Now on the positive end, I'm glad that little girl's grandfather was there to jump in, like he just instantaneously. None of this, oh no, someone help, he dove in. And I'm impressed because that is the most agile grandfather I have ever seen. So I have to give props to him for acting on the situation, but the little girl shouldn't have been in it in the first place. And someone that also agrees with that is Robert Kiesman, the chair of the Stevenson Harbor Authority, who said, you wouldn't go up to a grizzly bear in the bush and hand him a ham sandwich. You shouldn't be handing a thousand pound wild mammal in the water slices of bread. And you definitely shouldn't be letting your little girl sit on the edge of the dock with her dress hanging down after the sea lion has already snapped at her once. Just totally reckless behavior. And they do, they do have signs that say, do not feed the sea lion. They've already had signs there, but since this happened, they've also posted more signs. Signs that point out sea lion in the area. It is harmful to these animals to disturb them by approaching too close. Also threatening with legal penalties, stating section seven of the Marine Mammal Regulation no person shall disturb any marine mammal. Maximum penalty is a fine of $100,000. But it also appears that Kiesman has been in this job long enough to realize you can't always stop stupid. Saying, you can only spend so much time protecting people from their reckless behavior. We've now seen an example of why it's illegal to do this and why it's dangerous and frankly stupid to do this. And obviously my goal here isn't just to shame, shame, shame the family. I feel like this can be a teaching moment. Granted, I think it should be a generally understood thing not to fuck with a random undomesticated 600 pound animal, but to provide a little more insight, Andrew Trites, director of UBC's Marine Mammal Research video, explained what happened. What I see there is a case where an animal that should not be coming in close to people like that has become habituated, like a garbage bear. It's being fed by people, um, and in this case, we have people that were doing hand motions as though they were going to feed the animal, but they had no food. And ended up creating a situation where the animal is expecting food, you're giving indication you're giving to it and you're not and then frustration is built up. The child sits down, a little bit of her dress bunches up, hangs over the edge and it would appear to me as though as the sea lion came up to inspect it closer, saw it moving away and saw food that was leaving grabbed on and pulled back into the water and the little girl went right with him. So essentially because a bunch of stupid people broke the rules of do not feed the sea lion, all those people every time they interacted with the animal were playing stupid person Russian roulette. And unfortunately for this little girl, she did not come up a winner. But hey, maybe we can all learn a lesson from this and this won't happen again or most likely we'll have a very similar story very, very soon. You can't stop stupid. Some strains of stupid are just immune to everything we can throw at it. It's one of the unfortunate truths I feel like I've learned in this life so far. But from there, I wanna share some stuff I I love today and today in awesome brought to you by the don't be stupid stupid t-shirt and hoodie a shirt that says i love you and i just want you to make good decisions or let's be honest i know you're gonna make poor decisions and i just want to be able to say i told you so we put up a new run of that one this week so if you want to snag one while you can link to that down below and the first bit of awesome is uh, well actually hopefully you fan nominations for the streamies which is an internet award show they are currently open they've actually been open for about a month they close on june 9th i would love if the philip defranco show was nominated and then later on won news and culture so if you can, go to votedefranco.com, nominate the Philip DeFranco Show for news and culture. This is how we get our spot in the top five, and then there will be voting later on down the road. So if you can, you want to, you do, thank you so much. If you don't, then, I mean, I still love you, but just not as much, obviously. And then the next bit of awesome is for the mockumentary, Tour de Pharmacy. A mockumentary about all the drugs involved in professional cycling, and oh my god, they have everybody. Including the last person I would think that would be in a movie like this, but it's kind of fantastic that he is, Lance Armstrong. 
Then we have The Rock in a male enhancement drug commercial. Then we got a red band trailer for The House, the Will Ferrell, Amy Poehler R-rated comedy. And then a trailer for a Netflix series that for me came out of left fields and I am so excited. A series called Friends from College. A series from Nick Stoller, director of Forgetting Sarah Marshall, starring Keegan-Michael Key. I don't even need to go on. I'm on board. Fred Savage, even more on board. This makes me so happy, both the series and just another example that we are in a fantastic age of television. It's almost as if there's too much stuff now. I finally gave in to a lot of friends just going like, watch it watch it, and I started watching The Handmaid's Tale. So good and weird and different. Also season two of Master of None on Netflix, it completely blows the first season out of the water. It genuinely surprised me how much I enjoyed it, but I could, I could talk about TV and movies all day. Anyway, if you want to see the full versions of everything, I just shared the secret link of the day. Anything at all. Links, as always, are in the description down below. And then let's talk about Carl Oliver, Mississippi State Representative, coming under fire. People are outraged and calling for something to be done because of a post he put out, so let's read it. Also, to understand what he's talking about, in New Orleans, they are removing Confederate monuments. Back in 2015, the city council voted 6-1 to one to remove old Confederate monuments, and the removals have now been completed, with Robert E. Lee's statue removed last Friday. And so, in response to this Situation, Representative Carl Oliver wrote, The destruction of these monuments erected in loving memory of our family and fellow Southern Americans is both heinous and horrific. If the, and I use this term extremely loosely, leadership of Louisiana wishes to, in a Nazi-ish fashion, burn books or destroy historical monuments of our history, they should be lynched. Let it be known, I will do all in my power to prevent this from happening in our state. That is an interesting choice of wording there, Carl. And so for me, this is a story I've always had conflict with. I lived in the South a while growing up. And yes, while I knew my fair share of racists, there were also a lot of people that loved their Southern heritage for a lot of non-racist reasons. When they looked at that Dixie flag and or put it on the back of their truck, they saw something good and not something horrible. Now, I personally haven't ever really been able to separate uh, that flag with racism and slavery. That's me, but I'm open to their arguments. But if, if Carl, if you're gonna make the argument that it's about Southern pride and heritage, you don't use the word lynching, a method of killing primarily black people mainly in the South, especially as a rep representative of Mississippi, a state that between 1882 and 1968 was number one as far as states when it came to lynchings. It came in first place, Georgia coming in number two, Texas number three. I mean, Oliver, come on, you even represent a district that just 62 years ago lynched a 14-year-old black boy because he allegedly whistled at a white lady. It was 1955 and his name was Emmett Till. Now in response to this, a lot of people were angry, lawmakers were denouncing him, the Mississippi governor denounced him, saying Representative Oliver's language is unacceptable and has no place in civil discourse. And then this morning, Representative Oliver apologized, saying, in an effort to express my passion for preserving all historical monuments, I acknowledge the word lynched was wrong. I am very sorry. It is in no way ever an appropriate term. I deeply regret that I chose this word, and I do not condone the actions I reference, nor do I believe them in my heart. I freely admit my choice of words was horribly wrong, and I humbly ask your forgiveness. Carl, you made it all caps. Personally, I think he meant what he said. He's only apologizing because pretty much everyone turned against him here. That, of course, is going to fall into the public court of opinion, and we'll see what happens there. But with this story, I want to pass a question off to you. One, what do you think about this Carl Oliver situation? And two, do you think the Confederate monument should be taken down? Is it hiding and removing history and Southern heritage, or is it is it getting rid of the, the offensive and horrible symbols of the past? Let me know. I mean, we have people from all over this country, all over this world. I, I want to know, based off of your background, your experience, what you think. And then I want to introduce a new segment I'm going to call, Hey! That's not cool. And today's participants are Andre Durrell and Jose Uzcategui. They were facing each other in a boxing match, and at one point, Uzcategui hits Durrell late. So that he's the round was all about Durrell's jab. As he finds himself along the ropes, and not again after the bell. Bell rings, you're supposed to stop fighting. He didn't. He actually, in fact, lost the match because of that late hit. He was disqualified. He also apologized. It looked like they had made up. But that's not the not cool thing that happened. That thing was that after the fight was over, Darrell's uncle came into the ring and sucker punched his opponent. Wow, if you hit someone late in an official fight, it's a it's a dick move, it'll cost you points or you'll lose. If you hit someone like that just in real life like this guy did, that, that's assault. And in fact, as of recording this story, the police are reportedly looking for this man. As of recording this video, the police have still not found him. And the main point of this story is, hey, 
That's not cool. Then in Are We in the Twilight Zone news, Turkey has accused the United States of aggressive actions over that fight that happened outside of the embassy last week. Turkey has blamed US officials for quote, aggressive and unprofessional actions by American police officers toward the Turkish bodyguards and security lapses. Now here's the thing, the protesters and the DC police, they say that the bodyguards started the fight. The Turkish government was originally claiming that the bodyguards were just defending themselves, but then Turkish media said that the bodyguards decided to disperse the group. And now we're seeing this, and I just, I, it feels like we're in the twilight zone. How are you gonna say American police were aggressive and unprofessional? Because yes, yes, they did put hands on the bodyguards. You see one of the Turkish bodyguards getting hit by a police officer's baton, but the police officer's doing it because there are three pro-Turkey people stomping on an American woman. Also, maybe something's getting lost in translation, but I don't know how you could describe something as self-defense when it's a group of people stomping on a woman. Here, we would call that scumbags being scumbags. And once again, I wanna end this story by saying, fuck Erewhon, I hope he never finds his precious. Fuck Erewhon. Erdogan's bodyguards who beat on protesters. And fuck any politician that is not out there defending American citizens who are being beaten by people from a foreign power. Also, the last time I covered these stories, I got a few messages from people that were Turkish and they said, you know, I, I, why are you depicting all people from Turkey like this. I'm not. I'm talking about these people in this video. Now, if you are also someone that supports the bodyguards here, then yeah, that, that fuck you is going to extend to you. My issues and statements are very rarely with or for the masses, everyone. When you label or denounce an entire group, a group that definitely has different factions and multiple beliefs inside of it, you close the door on potential allies. Like, I have a problem with Saudi Arabia, specifically with women's rights and several other things. But do I hate all people from Saudi Arabia? No. But when I saw that story from back in 2000, were a victim of gang rape. She was sentenced to 200 lashes. At that point, I will say fuck Saudi Arabia, but that doesn't mean I hate all the people there. There are very obviously going to be people there that do not support things like that. We just might not hear that opinion because it can be scary to stand up. Even more so in Saudi Arabia because it is actually illegal to protest. It's banned. They push hard in 2011, saying regulations in the kingdom forbid categorically all sorts of demonstrations, marches, and sit-ins as they contradict Islamic Sharia law and the values and traditions of Saudi society. Governments and the goons they employ are not representative of the whole of a people. Some of you would be horrified to think that other people think every American is like Donald Trump. And there are other Americans who would be horrified that other people in other countries thought that every American was like Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton. And that's why I try to be very specific with who I tell to go fuck themselves. I actually think it's a fantastic place to end today's show. And remember, if you liked this video, you like what I do on this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you missed and want to catch up on the last Philip DeFranco show, you can click or tap right there to watch that. If you want to see today's brand new behind the scenes vlog, click or tap right there. But that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.